It started when an alien device did what it did, that a young boy saw Ben 10 for the first time with secrets that it hid. Now he's doing YouTube and turning all of the original 10 aliens into Pokemon. I'm great at parody songwriting, I know. I love Ben 10. It was everything to a young me. Peak designs, a great story. If only I was able to watch it properly and not all broken up into various episodes, so I only originally got the partial story. But hey, I'm here now and I'm going to turn all 10 of the OG Ben 10 aliens into Pokemon. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to share it around and comment down below what your favorite Ben 10 alien is. Let's go through the 10 designs in order of how they show up in the opening, starting with Wild Mutt. I think I slept on Wild Mutt pretty hard back in the day. I kind of love the simplicity of the design here and also it feels pretty alien, especially the other Volpamancers you see in the series. But also, Wildmutt felt like one of the more grounded aliens in design, just kind of being an enhanced doggy with no eyes. The eyeless dogs from Leaf and Company got nothing on him. My designer went for a sort of very basic idea, not changing the design a whole lot, funnily enough. Many of the Ben 10 designs work pretty well as Pokemon without much changes. I thought it'd be fun to play out the sort of dog aspects here with some bigger teeths and a big glob of drool always hanging from their mouth. It would just be so great as sort of a physics object in the 3D model. I like Ben's Wild Mutt because he goes pretty animalistic with it, seeing as he can't talk and just it feels very puppy. So Volmutt here gets that same sort of doggy energy and would 100% be the giant dog that just lays on your lap and prevents you from moving for hours. A lot of the aliens here had pretty clear typings when I made them, but this one was a bit tough. I settled on pure normal type, feeling like an early game capture, but none of the other types just really fit well enough here. Volmutt, the sense Pokemon, a normal type. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world. Volmutt are sightless, but possess other keen senses, including the ability to map out their prey using a form of heat sense. Though quite friendly, their large muscular form and heavy drooling can make them an affectionate menace. Volmutt's coarse fur can make petting uncomfortable. Volmutt that fall ill have difficulty moving about and will run into everything due to their impaired senses. Volmutt has a new ability called Thermography, where this Pokemon's attacks have increased accuracy and can't have their accuracy lowered. This ability has no effect on ghost and ice types, however. Here's my forearms design. Great, isn't it? Okay, obvious jokes aside, it is very hard to make a forearms Pokemon that isn't just Marchant. I mean, even I kind of failed here, in a good way, as I kind of dig the design I did. I very much reference Marchamp here for the sort of Pokemon stylized design to the musculature and hands, but gave it a bit more of a Banten flair, going with the idea that it very well could be a sort of alien race of Marchamp. With a bit of a four-eyed alien look to it, complete with spikes on the arms and lacking the very human belt. Forearms is one I still ain't a big fan of, mainly because when you've got a whole cast of cool aliens that do some crazy abilities, just being super strong isn't on my list of aliens I'd use. It's partially why I like Humongosaur a bit more, simply because it's a massive strong dinosaur and not just a red human with more arms. Although I do love the dynamic of other Tetramans when they interact with Ben's forearms. And man, did the Omniverse version of forearms just look like a very creepy looking wrestler. <laughs> Tetrams, the forearms Pokemon are fighting type. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world. Tetrams is theorized to be related to Marchamp due to their very similar body plan. Tetrams are incredibly tall and muscular. A single punch from them can topple buildings, and their power is unmatched with four arms. By clapping their hands together they can create powerful shockwaves. Even at longer ranges, foes aren't safe from this formidable Pokemon. Tetrams have the abilities No Guard and Huge Power. I love Grey Matter for a very simple fact that it feels like a Pokemon concept already. A frog-like being that plays off the grey aliens with large head, big eyes and grey skin all in one compact little package. And also, you know, how they made the Omnitrix and all that, it's just great, but 
making Grey Matter into a Pokemon, it was a bit tough as I didn't want to make it too humanoid in design, as too many of these would probably be. So I instead leaned into it being more of a frog-like and also actually resembling Froakie a bit. Like Froakie's much smarter brother while Froakie falls into obscurity till he goes into his ninja phase. Grey Matter in the show was cool simply because I liked the idea of being able to become super smart to outplay people. Maybe had a few daydreams of outwitting people I didn't like, but you know, we all had those kinds of daydreams, right? Let me be vulnerable here, people. I chose pure psychic type here. It just makes sense, and when all you do have is wits, really, I think no type does it better than just psychic type. Galvanus, the genius Pokemon, a psychic type. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world. Galvanus is one of the smartest Pokemon discovered, capable of performing tasks that require great intellect. Some theorize that Galvanus are here only to observe us, as their home planet is thought to be so technologically advanced that they have mastered space travel. Despite their tiny frame, Galvanus is fast and deadly, able to hold its own against massive Pokemon with ease. Galvanus has the ability Mind Over Matter, which boosts this Pokemon's special attack whenever a foe boosts their own stats. So this one, kind of funny. When I watched Ben 10 all cut up and strewn about on a Saturday, I obviously missed Accelerate's debut, and I guess I didn't notice it in the opening at all. Because when I first saw it, I remember thinking, oh, he's got more than 10 aliens now. That's nice. Because I literally thought Cannonbolt was one of the 10 originals. I actually started this design just going straight with the idea that it didn't need much of a change except for some proportional changes and just some Pokemon eyes. But I think that was a misstep, and I go in and change it quite a bit in the second go around. One of the funniest connections I made was how Accelerate and Cyclozar kind of look a tad similar. Weird wheel boys, just in different ways. And I do kind of make him look a bit Cyclozar in the second form. Accelerate is one of the aliens I'd be using just constantly. The idea of super speed and being able to essentially slow down time to a crawl is amazing, and being able to zip around anywhere is just peak power. In the second design, you'll see that I actually give it more of a reptilian face again like that cyclers are, and I think that works to the better without sacrificing too much of what makes one or the other unique. Kinetorate, the speed Pokemon, a normal and fighting type. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world, Kinetorate is one of the fastest known Pokemon, capable of reaching blinding speeds that allow it to perceive time differently. Its mind moves as swiftly as its body, making it highly intelligent. However, its frail nature requires it to constantly move and think to avoid danger. The frictionless balls of its feet can be adjusted at will to change their friction, allowing Kinetorate to stop on a dime with ease. Kinetorate has the ability Speed Boost. Obviously. You can say there's a better alien than Upgrade, I won't be mad. You'd be wrong, but you are entitled to your opinion. Upgrade is the coolest alien I think in the entire series, with some of the most fun and interesting powers, especially in a modern setting. What I wouldn't give to be able to upgrade my car to be able to fly or pull my phone to shoot lasers or something, I don't know. Upgrade is just cool and their design slaps. I'd say very much in thanks to the Ben 10 color scheme of that neon green, white and black, this is the first design I did when someone requested Ben 10 Aliens as Pokemon, and I wanted to keep a very similar design to the original, but play off a bit of our other premier alien Pokemon, Deoxys, giving a very similar core in the chest of our upgrade Pokemon here. Because of how goopy upgrade is normally, I want to show that in the design with the legs being this amorphous, puddly like look. Maybe it'd just be dripping everywhere with little nanobots. I decided although the expression can come through with the shifting of the eye ring, I went with giving it an actual eye in the middle similar to that of Unknown. But it kind of makes it look even more Pokemon now, I think. Mechamorph, the techno alien Pokemon of Steel type. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world. Mechamorphs are technology-loving Pokemon that are rarely seen outside cities where they can merge with tech. 
Much like Rotom, when Mechamorph inhabits technology, it gains control of the device and also upgrades it, making it work better than ever before, even repairing it. Their partially goopy bodies are due to being made up of many smaller Pokemon that can only survive by working together as a colony. Mechamorph has a new ability called Upgrade, where it transforms into an enemy steel type, raising sharply the copied Pokemon's most proficient stat. Diamond is an interesting design that I feel like could be an ice type, but it has nothing to do with ice, so pure rock type here, even if it does look a bit confusing. The idea here was to have it resemble a bit of a garganacle like look, even down to the white sort of pattern shapes across the body. The absolute hell it was of making this thing look angular and keep it all in perspective made me want to pull my beard hairs out, but luckily I could reference the actual diamond head image for more detailed sort of anatomy. Diamond Head in the series was pretty cool. I've always been a fan of sort of earth bending, and although this isn't exactly that, diamond bending will do too. And being able to morph one's body and even regenerate is kind of a big plus by itself. It's funny that Chromastone felt a bit like a replacement to Diamond Head even with all the lore, but sometimes you just can't beat the OG Diamond Alien. Petrogold, the diamond Pokemon, a pure rock type. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world, Petrogol is made entirely of a substance similar to diamond, making it incredibly hardy. Its body is malleable at Petrogol's will, allowing it to create sharp spears and blades that also serve as shields. Petrogol also has remarkable regeneration abilities, capable of regrowing itself from most injuries. However, sound-based attacks cause immense damage to Petrogol. Petrogol have the ability Sturdy and Regenerator. I'ma say it now, Ripjaws was the scariest of Ben 10's original aliens. I don't have like philosophobia or anything like that. I mean, it's just got one of the most horrifying looks about them. The big sharp jaws, the unhinging of the jaw, and just being an anglerfish humanoid is enough for me. In terms of actual powers, I didn't find Ripjaws all that interesting. Being just a mainly aquatic transformation with some sharp jaws wasn't enough to sell me on it. I'd switch it out in an instant. The Pokemon version here, however I kind of love, I think the eyes I gave it to help make it a bit cuter and much less like a horrific deep being. I did go with Water Dark here for the typing. While the water kind of speaks for itself, I feel like Dark or Steel type worked well for a secondary typing. Mainly because of the whole having those sharp scary jaws that can shred anything and being a deep sea creature, even though many of the species in the show aren't always such scary and pointy individuals, Let's just say the Pokemon version is a bit more of an aggressive soul and leave it at that, shall we? Jawsies, the anglerfish Pokemon of War and Dark type. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world, Jawsies is both an aquatic and terrestrial Pokemon, making nowhere safe from its powerful jaws. Jawsies can extend its jaws to a frightening length, capable of easily accommodating an entire Sharpedo. The bite force behind these jaws can shred metal, and large ships stand no chance against jaw seas. Its ability to transform its legs into a tail is a remarkable sight, however, walking on land can lead to rapid dehydration. Jaw seas has the ability Strong Jaw and Swift Swim. Hey, remember when they turned Stinkfly into this? What was that about? Stinkfly is another one of those aliens I feel like I slept on. Mainly because of, you know, icky bug sort of ideals when I was younger. But I kind of love the idea of a giant alien bug. This whole point is just about shooting goo. This whole entry is going to have a lot of references to shooting goo, so just get that all out of your system now. I'll wait. You done? Good. Stingfly had the honor of being Ben's most sane flying transformation. And for that, it already gets a lot of points. Being able to fly is like high on my list of powers I'd have. And then being able to freely shoot my goo anywhere. Wow, that's wrong. I shouldn't say that. Reminds me so much of the glue gun from Prey, a great game if you've never played it, where you can just fire the globules and they'll harden for so many different purposes. Who knew goo had so many uses? The Pokemon version of Stinkfly has a Yanma sort of charm to it, looking much cuter and very curious to lie. You know, till it fires the goo from its eye sockets. Disgusting. I chose just bug flying here. I'd always thought poison would be fitting for Stingfly, but it doesn't really have anything actually poisonous in its kit. No poison types here in the OG 10. 
Goopadop. The slime fly Pokemon, a bug and flying type. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world. Goopadop is a curious bug type Pokemon that uses a stinky, gooey fluid fired from its eyes and mouth. The gooid fires can vary in viscosity, ranging from a rock hard, impeding substance to a slime like fluid that causes foes to slip around as if on ice. Even if foes get too close to Goopadop, its tails are incredibly sharp and can easily puncture most armor. Goopadop has the ability Gooey. Ah, Ghost Freak, what a twist to the series you were. I love Ghost Freak, it's such a freaky heh, design, and the references it makes to Tim Burton esque designs is always a treat. It's also a bit upsetting that it's an unviable option due to what happens to it in the series. Because, you know, I'd be using them powers for, you know, purely respectable reasons, of course. Now, Ghost Trick has two forms, and the Pokemon is no different. I thought it would make more sense for it to be a sort of berserk Pokemon, where the normal form is a bit frail, looks very sort of duskull like and as if it's hiding something between those layers of ghost skin. I mean, the main issue was I wanted it to look like it's a bit of a tattered cloth in a sort of sausage shape, but initially it just looked kind of like a petrified poop or something else. And that wasn't ideal, but with a bit of a liquefier, I think it got there. I opted for Rayman-like hands too, but I think giving it arms would have probably helped the silhouette a bit. But the idea of just phasing a hand through the wall to spook you was too good to pass up. And also, kind of haunted connections there. Let's go on to the Berserk form next. Ghost Freak's unshackled form is creepy. The ribcage, the upside down skull head and the tentacles, it's a lot for a kid's show but I think that works very much in its favor. I decided to follow much of the design idea here in the Pokemon version, having the tendrils bursting out of the body and one as a tail and the head keeping an almost skull-like shape, leaning towards it being a bit abstract but enough to get the idea across. I'd love it if in the 3D model the tendrils would sort of shift that black and white constantly. It'd be so trippy and kind of gross too. I don't know the exact numbers it'd get when transformed, but it'd be enough where it'd become a serious threat during this form. Our only problem is, you have to wait to control it. Ectophase, the shackled Pokemon. A ghost type in its normal form and a ghost dark type in its unshackled form. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world. Ectophase may seem harmless at first, but it reveals a dark side during the heat of battle. Its outer layer of skin wraps around it but unfurls when in danger, revealing Ectophase's true form with dangerous sharp claws and tendrils that drain the life of anyone who touches them. While transformed, Ectophase will do whatever it deems necessary to dispatch its foes in the most violent way possible. Ectophase has a new ability called Unshackle, where at half HP this Pokemon transforms, gaining a boost to its damage and defenses but becoming uncontrollable for three turns. Number 10 is also number 1 as one of the first aliens seen, good old Heat Blast. A fantastic design and one that will show up all the time in the series. A bit Ghost Rider in design, Heat Blast feels almost Pokemon already. And you'll see in the first draft of the design I did, I didn't change much except for some proportions and a little shoulder volcano that I thought would be fitting for them. I do go back and make a second design with even more proportional balances and an extra shoulder volcano. And I think it turns out great. Although Heat Blast feels almost pure fire, I did opt to give it the rock type here as it made sense due to the plates of molten stone that sit on their body. I like to imagine the plates breaking off and melting away as new ones cool instantly back into place as an animation for it as well. Heat Blast is a cool design, but not my most wanted alien in my Farfo tricks. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't say no to it, but there's just something about fire that doesn't appeal to me. I feel like I couldn't control it well, getting Prince Zuko vibes from that for sure. But as a Pokemon, heck yeah, I'd 100% train it. Pokemon just seem much better at being able to control their elemental powers. Just take Mag Cargo and Slugma as an example. Pyronite, the fiery Pokemon, a fire and rock type. A Pokemon found in deep space that now inhabits regions around the world. Pyronite are Pokemon made of burning magma and exude constant weltering heat. Their bodies are in a state of melting and glow red hot with the plates of rock rarely staying in place and constantly shifting around. Pyronite can throw these plates as well as fireballs and molten magma when threatened. 
Various reports have stated that Pyronite can fly by generating enough frost from the palms of their hands. Pyronite has the ability Flame Body. Huh, all 10 OG aliens done. You want to see more? Comment down below if you want me to make more. And who your favorite designs of the video are. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. It helps a lot. And share this video around with all the Ben 10 fans out there to see if my designs really hold up in their eyes. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ah! <laughs>